StatsBomb makes some of its data freely available so that you can learn how to work with it. You can get this from github.com slash statsbomb slash open dash data. Once you download that, you'll find that there's a documents folder. And in that, if you look at the main data specification, you can see all of the different events that there are within the StatsBomb data set. These seem to be much more comprehensive than the stats that are currently tracked from Premier League games via OptoStats or Genius Sports. Although, of course, it's possible that they may well be collecting more stats than they make publicly available. The easiest way to work with the open data is with the R programming language. You can download that from cloud.r-project.org slash index.html where you'll find installs for either Linux, Mac OS or Windows. You'll also want to install R Studio, which is an IDE for working with the R language. There's a free desktop version available and you can again download that for Windows, Linux or Mac OS. On the StatsBomb site, there's quite a few resources showing how you can work with the data. This one here links to quite a useful PDF that you can go through. And there's also some more examples here as to how you can work with um, various different data. So they have all of Messi's games on. Um, there's some data from the Men's 2018 World Cup, several women's leagues and um, some other data as well. I worked through this tutorial from Biscuit Chaser FC. And for me, the most challenging part was actually getting some of the packages that you need to work with installed into RStudio. You install packages by going to the Packages tab here, clicking on the Install button and typing in the name of the packages that you want to install. So the one that I had the most trouble with was DevTools. I had trouble with this on Mac OS. I was able to install DevTools, but I wasn't then able to use it to bring in the stats bombs packages that I needed. I also had some challenges with it in Linux, but in the end, I was able to resolve those by just installing a whole number of dependencies that were needed. Once you've installed DevTools, you need the Tidyverse package. And then once those are installed, you would use the following commands to install StatsBomb R and SB Pitch. So you'd paste these lines here and then you would run each line individually using this run button. The Biscuit Chaser FC tutorial shows then how that you can write the code to create a simple pass map. And I'm going to take you through that now. So the first thing you'd need to do is to load each of the three main libraries into your environment. So I'm going to do that now. So as you can see, as I run each of those lines in the console, I get my messages below. There are a whole load of warning messages that I got, but I didn't get any errors. And when I've run this previously, that hasn't stopped what I needed to do from working. So let's run through each of those again. So this first line here is then going to pull all of the free competitions that are available. So that loads all of the available competitions. There are 37 of those. So each competition would have its own ID. It would have a season ID, a country name, a competition name, a competition gender and a season name as well. So we are going to select the competition with ID 37, which is the women's Premier League from England for the 2019-2020 season. So you'll see that that has now gone down to one from eight. And when I open that up, you'll see that it's just selected competition ID 37, season ID 42, England, FA Women's Super League, competition gender and the season name, which is the 2019-2020 season. Now I'm going to load in all of the matches. So it's previously got that remembered from when I last ran this um, script. 
I'm going to run that again now. So if we open that, you will see all of the various matches and all of the data from that. And now I'm going to pull all of the events from all of those matches. That takes a little while to run. And then once that's run, we'll run a function to clean that data. So now we're ready to start seeing some interesting stuff. So the first line I'm going to run is just to create pitch command to create a football pitch. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for one particular match and store that within an array. So let's run that. There's a specific match data then in here and that has 634 objects within it and now I'm going to recreate my pitch and within that I'm going to plot every single pass that was made during that game so that's the position for all the passes that were made during that game so now what I want to be able to do is to run that again, but this time into the array, I'm going to actually put in exactly the same command as before. So I've got the match ID, the type name being pass, the team name being Arsenal, but this time I'm just going to select passes made by one particular player. So let's run that. So that has selected all of that data now, and now I'm going to run the command that will then plot that onto the pitch. So there you can see that appear there. Now I'm going to do the same thing again. Read all that into the array once more. But this time when I create the pitch, I'm also going to put where the pass ended up. And as well as that, I'm going to colour it red. I'm going to have an arrow showing the direction. So let's run that. So there you can see the direction of that pass and how far it went. And then finally, what I'm going to do is I need to reverse that scale because at the moment, the y-axis is the wrong way round, so I need to reverse the scale of the y-axis. And I'm also going to add a label to this image as well to show which game that it came from. So again, just reload everything into that array. I probably don't need to do that every time, actually. I could probably leave those lines out and just keep recreating the pitch from the, from the, same, from the same array. So now when I run that, you'll see that it's flipped it over because it's reversed the y-axis. It's added this label in as well.